Yo, what is up everyone? Brian with you from the Game Cabinet. We're doing our AI only championship series here in Civilization 6. Continuing on with group stage number four in our second chance round. And let's see, we just hit a new era. Is this right? Is this where I left off? 210. Hold up. Everyone just calm down for a second. Uh rendered. Uh let's see. Where did we end off leaving off at the last episode? Yeah. Hold up, we were turn four, and then we will be to ten. Okay, so apparently I didn't realize. Now I think it was here. I think we had already hit the golden age. I think we had paused just slightly after. Okay, yeah, I just got a little scared there because I'm like, I don't remember leaving it off this close to a new era. But anyways, so this new era, Japan, Babylon, Mongolia, and Samaria all got golden ages, dark ages with the other three. So what does that mean? Busan is flipping right back to Korea, so not much there. Portugal kind of screwed themselves over. Yeah, they, they really had a good shot there, but now they're just not in a good position at all. Let's see. Mongolia, Golden Age, I don't know is going to make much of a difference. They might be able to take Korra back, but that one's a little slow, so no idea there. Um, Samaria got a Golden Age. Yeah, that's right. So they are going to start flipping some stuff back, but they're so far behind. And then Kamar ended up losing. Yeah, that one. Okay. Okay, I kind of remember. Japan got a Golden Age. Uh, so are they going to take Tokyo? I think they are going to take Tokyo. Actually, that one I think was flipping to Samaria, right? Okay, it's been a minute. I hadn't recorded since yesterday. So, you know, of course, I forgot literally everything by between today and yesterday i mean i've had a lot of things going we had an old world episode in between i ended up working for a couple hours yesterday um so that was tiring played a lot of battlefield which you know i don't mind there's a lot of hate for it i actually i'm enjoying it it's 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 good there are definitely some really 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 bad bugs and definitely at times the weapon uh uh the inaccuracy in the weapons is a little ridiculous but anyways this whole another point we don't really play first person shooters on the channel Mostly just because it's too stressful, and I swear way too much when I play first-person shooters, because, you know, everyone cheats. <laughs> Uh, anyways, how are the scores actually looking right now? Hammurabi's in first place. I'm pretty sure he's fairly safe at this point. He's 300 up on third place. That's going to be fairly safe at this point. I mean, because it should only grow. And we got a while until we end up hitting the comets. So I think he's going to be okay. And in the scheme of things, he kind of deserves it. He did have that really good zombie game. I mean, it kind of wasn't fair, though, from the standpoint of he was the only one that actually had. Well, okay. Okay. Really, it wasn't fair for anyone. It's just like you could you could argue so many different ways. I could argue how it wasn't fair because he had more modern units, which was allowing him to actually fight back against zombies. But at the same point that, you know, you could also argue it the opposite way where it's like, hey, well, he always gets that boost. So that's who his civ is. He's just that overpowered. And you're like, OK, well, yeah, I mean, that's true. But still, still. Anyways, looks like the Domri are maybe marching towards a cod. No, they're not. They're marching through a cod. Is it cod your suzerain? Uh, yeah, Taverman did suzerain. Okay. Uh, Kapong is flipping. What's weird is Samaria is losing this one. Are they going to get Kampong first? Yeah, they'll get Kampong first, which honestly, that kind of makes up for the original redo. So there you go. He kind of has it back. This might actually be a slightly better spot. He is original town, I think, was right here. Um, well, if you would have gotten a couple more of these tiles, unfortunately, all of these sexy, sexy volcanic tiles, though, are in Sherpik. But I would, I would, I would, I would just 100% assume he's about to get declared on, though. Like, 100%, once he ends up taking Kampong, I, like, uh, uh, Taberman's gonna declare war. I, I would be shocked if it doesn't happen instantly. We got Battleship popping out. We got an Arthur randomly in the ocean, another Battleship. Uh, Japan doing pretty good there with the Battleships, because I don't think we see any other other naval units yeah, literally those are like the only naval units in the game right now it's a little strange but eh, okay that's fine uh leventa is it being warred upon no yeah remember he's like protecting leventa for whatever reason that means he must be suzerain because you can't move through it unless you're suzerain i feel like i don't know i feel like i wish the city states had a little more ai like a little more independence where you know you could cut deals with them open borders i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know it's i just i always still really 100 percent wish like i think it was the civ 4 mod it was like rise and fall but it was like r y s e uh and but essentially what could happen is like literally out of like free cities that are like completely independent new civs could actually be birthed it was just like it was such a really freaking cool idea and i just wish that you know we could see something similar here with the free cities you know or even like like uh, if the city states could eventually like achieve 
achieve, like maybe settle a second town and then eventually declare themselves um, a, a independent nation. You know, that's what I would love to see, as opposed to just everyone strictly starting one town. You know, I, I feel like having a little more variation, it's a little more realistic. And what was cool about Rise and Fall is like your cities would actually, if I remember right, it was like decline, right? Which is like similar to Small World, where your civilization could go and decline. And eventually you might end up losing all of your civilization and it might like become nothing. So like you'd kind of like have a rise, but then you would also kind of have the fall and you'd kind of have to like balance it and hopefully, you know, very similar, I suppose. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but I assume it was probably something similar to like loyalty where, you know, you're just trying to keep like your cities happy enough because let's see, that would have been in Civ 4 and wasn't Civ 4 the one that was notoriously bad for happiness or was that Civ 5? Oh, hey, it's been a while, man. We need to go back and play some Civ 4. I miss Civ 4. Civ 5, you know, it's fun. It was interesting. We played it a little bit again, but like at this point, Civ 5 just doesn't match up to Civ 6. I feel like like this is just like like it's kind of comparing humankind versus Civ. Like the problem with humankind right now is the game's been out for a couple months where, you know, Civ 6 has been out for like five years. So, you know, 4X games just generally get better over time. If you compare Age of Wonders 3 base game versus Age of Wonders 3 today, even even though it hasn't been updated in a few years. Like, it's just not even the same kind of game. It's just, that's what happens here. All right, anyways, the is being built here in uh, 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 Kamar, which he needs. We do have these rock bands going crazy right now, but once again, uh, Taverman's actually the one that would win it, but it's, it's too far away to make much of a difference. Religion. Interesting. So Taverman has two sieves right now. Japan is keeping him back. Uh, yeah, Mongolia, or sorry, uh, Samaria doesn't have any religion. Okay. So he didn't actually declare war right away. I really am kind of shocked by that. Huh. He's actually at war against Kublai Khan. So maybe that's why. Why is he at war against Kublai Khan? Well, it's got to be an emergency then. I don't see any other reason. Hmm. Yeah, it's got to be an emergency. I see no reason why... Um, this treason should ever be forgot. I don't know how to remember remember the 5th of November uh, Which it's well past the 5th of November now at this point, but you know I anyways, what were we saying? <laughs> there must have been an emergency Why else would he have declared war on an opponent that's across the continent? Um, the other thing to actually note here is he's also at war with oh Korea. Okay, interesting I was gonna say Babylon because Babylon has a lot of troops in his territory. Hmm. What is happening there? I'm not sure. Quara has stabilized, though, for Babylon, so he's not going to end up losing that. Did Busan ended up going back to you? Okay. And then we still have a bunch of free cities over here. And, yeah, hey, um, he's actually marching his domeries towards Mongolia, which, you know, hey, if this was, like, 100 years earlier, it would be really scary. But at this point in the game, it's like, okay, those domeries are just a tea bit outclassed at this point. Tokyo is now flipping to Japan, which, you know, Japan needs it because Japan's... I mean, as much as I'm, like, rooting for Samaria to make a huge comeback, they have no legitimate shot. Japan, on the other hand, actually does have a legitimate shot, so that's why I'm kind of rooting for them. There will be one more era, and this next era, if Japan's going to win, they need a Golden Age. They probably need, uh, sorry, Samaria to get a Dark Age, and then, like, maybe get Okiyama back, and maybe even come and start taking some of these. They probably need a Dark Age up here for um, Kamar as well. Um, that's going to be about their only hope. It's not really a good hope for the record, but, you know, they can try. So is Tokyo actually going to flip to him? Yeah, no, it's 100% going to flip to him. Okay. Well, don't think you're going to face any issues here because the free city, I think, is putting more pressure still than a normal city. I mean, it's not even a large city. Well, that's the only thing, I guess. The free city doesn't grow as much, so I suppose the city could eventually grow larger, but, you know, that's not going to be a super strong city. I also... And this is the other thing. I just wish the AI actually conquered free cities. That, like, and to me, that is a huge miss just from the standpoint that free cities have been around now since Rise and Fall. That was the second expansion. That was, what, like, two, three years ago now when that came out? And somehow the AI still doesn't, like, have any ability to conquer it? That's just weird to me. All right, so um, Japan ended up ninjing uh, Lagash here, which I have to say is a very weird choice. I mean... This is great for Japan, but he can't hold it. Why would he not raise that? He also has, well, three wonders. This is a four wonders here in Lagesh. That's a very sexy town. Um, And that's, yeah, that's not the original capital. Did he move capitals? Like, was this a case where this was like a new capital? And this was the original capital, so he went and conquered the new capital? That would explain why he didn't raise it, but I just don't ever remember Uruk ever being ca uh, uh, canceled. Capitaled. Uh, can't conquer. 
conquered. What C word am I looking for? My God. Yeah, I don't ever remember being conquered. So that's that's strange to me. Uh, he's down to eight turns. I mean, he's trying, man. I just don't think he can hold it. He's going to have to take a redo here. I think. I mean, Eric's the one that's give, putting a lot of pressure. So obviously, can, can, <laughs> conquering Eric is also a possibility here. Uh, canceling Eric would work. I mean, if he can somehow cancel the city and cancel the loyalty pressure from the city, then yeah, that would work as well. Um, but, you know, I don't really think that's a, a, a thing in the game. But, you know, hey, hey, who knows? Okay, we actually got a good Golden Gate here. Congratulations, Portugal. You now have my love forever and ever and ever. Um, do we get a good Petra? I don't know if we got a Petra. And there's not that much desert tile. Um, have some more desert up here. That would be a very interesting Petra with that um, wonder. Uh, did you build Petra over here? You did not build Petra over here. It doesn't look like we actually have the Petra yet. Hmm. Hmm? No, I don't see it. I should be looking at pips, but I'm actually looking for the actual Petra. Yeah, no, no Petra yet. Lagesh is now officially flipping right back, which is unfortunate. Unfortunate because, you know, my love Samaria is going to end up, um, well, falling further behind because of it. And my, you know, pseudo affair with Japan is also not proving to help much. So, you know, hey, I do love Japan. I've always loved Japan as a, 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 a country. Um, someday definitely would want to go visit Japan. Uh, but more than that, I rarely really like them in the game i have to say i super underrated them for the longest period of time and i definitely now think that they are one of the best civs um i'd say top 10 but they have added a lot of civs since you know our last ranking i'm trying to remember where we originally ranked it we did a ranking of all the ai like i think before our first ai only championship series so like something like three years ago i think this was probably just with the rise and fall yeah i don't think there was any other updates after rise and fall or any other civs after the rise and fall civs. I'm pretty sure it was like waiting for like any other uh, future updates still. So that being said, I mean, at that point there were what, like 30 something civs and now there's like 50, maybe not that much. There might've been 40 something, but still, still. Um, okay, two diplomatic victory points loss for um, Kamar, which I mean, once again, I don't think anyone was even close. No, no one's close, no one's close. We got a new arrow popping out here. That's a little earlier than I was expecting. Uh, Taverman's only 40 turns away from winning. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so Japan didn't really keep as much pace as they were there for a while. Um, Then again, they're at 425 cultures. So no, they're actually doing a pretty good job. Taverman's just kind of a little psychotic with that culture right now. But what's his tourism? That's kind of the bigger deal. Um, Because... Culture, and I still, I gotta look at the files, because this is just, like, one of the things that just never made sense, uh, and I never really figured it out, but essentially, the tourism is your offense, and your culture is the defense, so basically, you just need to have more tourism than they have culture, to an extent, like, there's other factors to it, so I think his tourism's at 633, which is definitely more, so... At this point, he is on track to win, especially with these rock bands. But, yeah, nah, Japan's got rock bands, too. I just, nah, I don't see it, dude. I don't see it. It's just so hard for the AI to win a, like, literally at this point in the game, it becomes almost impossible. Unless you pop out just a super, super freaking early cultural victory before anyone gets anything going. Or you get just one of those rare games in which, like, none of the other AI, like, this would actually have almost been that game had Japan not, a little earlier on, actually gone for a little bit of the cultural victory. Um, there would have been a chance for Khmer to actually win this. But if, like, one other Civ just kind of goes for culture, you're just kind of screwed. And that's, and I talk talked about this earlier that's one thing i don't like about cultural victory is it's based also on what your opponents do where that's like the only victory type that's based that way you know it would be kind of like a commercial victory in which you know you have to have x amount of money more than your opponent which sounds great until you realize if anyone else is going for money that just like suck you know a much better option would be to like you know build a bunch of banks or something like that or like maintain financial control over all of the luxury resources like i mean there's definitely ways they could have implemented it hopefully civ 7 will give us like I, what i would love to see is i would love to see all of these victory types plus a commercial victory type in the base game like to me i would rather see that than having like 50 civs like, 
you know, Age of, uh, Age of Empires 4, I think, is a great example where there's only, what, five or six civs in the game, which is, you know, kind of bare bones, but the base gameplay is actually there. And I would rather have a good ga base gameplay with fewer civs and then kind of just be able to add them in later. Because, like, the problem is... They had pretty decent gameplay to begin with, but with a lot of sieves. And what did they do? They ended up adding a bunch more sieves, but then the gameplay never really, you know, we didn't get as much gameplay changes. I mean, I say that. There was, like, every patch had something new, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. We still never saw, like, the big game-changing ones. Like, we only saw Diplomacy Victory get added, you know? But I guess we did see governors and stuff like that, you know, and then I mean, honestly, a lot of it, too, is probably got to go to COVID and I hate blaming that. But like that probably really changed what Rise and Fall was. Rise and Fall, not Rise and Fall, uh, New Frontier Pass. Yeah, I, I guarantee you New Frontier Pass would have looked a lot differently, but it was just like, OK, what's fairly easy to do? Let's add like a bunch of sieves and add some new fun ways to play the game. All right, cool. All right. So Samaria got a Dark Age. So Japan did get that Golden Age uh, to Samaria's Dark Age. The problem is Khmer also got a Golden Age and like Japan needs to outclass Khmer. They need to catch up right now. They need to not just get a bunch of points, but they need to also catch up. Okiyama. Oka, Okayama, my gosh, why do I always say it that way, uh, is unfortunately flipping, it says to Samaria, well, I said unfortunately, I don't really know I said unfortunately, but anyways, I think this is going to flip to Japan, Japan's not even on the list now, Kampong's actually flipping really hard here as well, oh no, that's bad, um, that's bad for Japan at least, that's really good for Kamar, which, yay, I'm now on the Kamar bandwagon, woo, oh dude, yeah, yeah, this is probably going to be one where we end up just letting it run in the background, like, yeah, that's getting a little painful, that's getting a little painful, there was just a whole nother level of class here, like, both Kamar and, uh, Babylon just had a whole different level of play compared to everyone else, which, I mean, this is two games in a row for Babylon, 100% Babylon deserves this, um, because, I mean, they played really well last time, with the zombies, and they're just playing really well here. Babylon is freaking scary. They are, in my opinion, Russian level scary. Like, I feel like they should be able to win this. They definitely have to be favorites going forward, especially with Russia out. Actually brings up a good question. Who has made it? I'm going to pull up my doc here. It's been a minute. Some of these sieves I kind of forgot about. Um, okay, so let's make sure we got the right doc and not last year's. All right, so thus far we have Latara, we have Tamar, we have Trajan, we have Simone, we have Victoria, uh, we have Pericles, we have Basil, we have Teddy Roosevelt, the Rough Rider version, we have Gandhi, we have Philip II, we have Eleanor of Aquitaine, English version, we have John Curtin, we have Lady Six Sky, we have Frederick Barbosa, we have Genghis Khan, we have Poundmaker, and we have uh, Ba Tru, Vietnam. And then we have in the second place groups that are going to get one more shot, we got Dido Alexander Wilhelmina, which will also then add in Kamar and um, uh, Babylon. So, I think Babylon's got to be, I, there's three favorites in my opinion right there. You got to put Gandhi, because he's a two-time winner and i think uh teddy because teddy's always right there he's always right there um so i think those have to be your three favorites right now and i would not be shocked if any of those three won it um so that means someone like tamar is going to totally pull it out <laughs> clearly watch it be like the end the final match is going to be between like tamar uh 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 Khmer, uh rome and who's another one I talk crap about all the time? Um, Philip II, yes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I don't even want to watch that. <laughs> Please don't be that. Oh gosh. That would be like, okay, I'm trying to think of a sports reference here. Let's say NFL. That would be like um, the Bears versus the Jacksonville Jaguars in the Super Bowl, which, you know, probably is not physically possible for those two. Eh! I don't know anyone's actually eliminated yet, but oh my god, that would just be a boring game right now. Especially the two teams as they are right now. It'd just be like, blah. blah. Um, or let's see, in uh, world football terms, uh, that would be like, current Barcelona, yeah, without Messi and just all the crap that ha they have going on there against Manchester United and all the crap they have going on there, right? Oh, uh, man, man, man. I've been a Barcelona fan for a while, um, although it's been kind of hard to watch them. Um, and then, like, I never really liked Manchester United. They're too much like the Yankees, in my opinion. But they've been kind of interesting just because, like, I don't know. Like, I, I liked... Um it's been interesting because they've been so bad, so I kind of feel for them, and it's been interesting to watch, 
you know, and kind of root for them, but also kind of not care. And I mean, really, City's the bad guys now. So, you know, if you got to root for anyone or root against anyone, it's got to be City. So, okay. What are we doing? I don't know. We're talking about literally everything but the game in this episode. Why? There's not really that much going on. Uh, I suppose Japan did t uh, tick a little bit closer. You know, uh, Okayama, Oki, Okayama, my God, Oki, Okayama. Okay, that would actually make more sense. Okayama, Okayama. Actually, that might be closer to Okayama. I think it's Okayama would be my assumption, but I always want to go yee. I don't know why I want to yeet it out. Okay, so you actually did go to Samaria. Hmm. So yeah, that's not good for Japan. And then I think with Kampong going back to uh, uh, um, Kamar, I just don't really see how Japan catches up here. The biggest thing is rockets. Um, Taverman's on the second rocket. Babylon actually, well, here's a good question. Because, okay, well, first things first, they're making 600 signs. So that's like a 1,200 signs game. That's what they should be making. So, no, they're making enough signs they could actually win the game here. Um, I was wondering if anyone had slowly caught up to them. No, yeah, Khmer actually does have more tech now. No, they don't. They just shot off more rockets. That's it. Yeah, they have 10 more tech right now. Jeez. They might actually have all the techs, too. So what, I, I think they're going for a domination, Victor. I think that's what's happening. If I could see, like, their military strength. But, like, I feel like, because they got the death robots, and they seem to have, like, a lot of armies around. That's why I kind of feel like they might be, yeah, see, 2,000 and the army strength. I, I feel like that's what they're doing. They are currently working on seasteads. Uh, Joel is actually working on smart materials. Interesting. What is his freaking science that he's working on smart materials already? 125 and he's popping out smart materials? How? How? <laughs> what? Was that a bug? Did I misread that? Come on, give me the text, please. How in God's name are you working on smart materials? What the heck? Oh, hey, guess what? How? That's 2200. That's like a four, like how is he that much science? All right, anyways, where did these comments start hitting? So that was a four tile comment. I mean, I guess we can probably pop in here or stay here for a little bit longer. Um, I mean, there's gotta be some major, major, major uh, uh, a comet shifting here. Or comet power shifting. Power shifting via comets. Probably just comet shifting. That one, it just killed the horse. <laughs> Screw your horses, man. All right. Um, yeah, that didn't really have much of a effect on anyone. Um, ironically, nah. I was going to say, eh, nah, nah. I mean, what might actually work out really well is like, or it gets hit. Because that could help Japan maybe grab one here. Kapo I mean, eh. He just needs to lose like one of his major cities over here. And he's popping out the Sydney Opera House right now as well. Which is just like yet another wonder. And I don't think Japan has any wonders at this point. Uh, solar storms, which, you know, all that's going to do is keep make sure anyone, uh, no one actually wins a science victory, which, you know, not surprising. Um, Taverman is working on composites. Yeah, he's still got a ways to go. Hammurabi's on seasteads. I really do feel like Hammurabi has, like, basically everything he needs to win. Like, I think he could shoot off all the rockets at this point if he so chose. chose. Um... I don't know if he has too many rocket sites up. What might have happened is he also might have lost a rocket site or two from like being pillaged. And so because of that, he's just a little bit behind. But no idea as of yet. Um, Korea. What did Korea end up with science? Uh, no, I was not trying to click on you. Dude, I was excited. Man, I thought Mongolia was going to be able to put up more of a fight. Another four tile one. Interesting. Also, definitely do not like Mongolia. So, Mongolia is the one that's getting targeted, which is then really good for Kamar. Um, yeah, so she was at 369. So, I mean, like, that can kind of show you just a little bit how powerful Korea can be. She's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cities. And no offense, this isn't even, like, the greatest, like, terrain. Like, this is just not great uh, area. She's really trapped in here. And yet, because yet despite that, she has almost 400 freaking signs. That's ridiculous. Hammurabi's down to 369. What happened there? Um, another four tile one, dude. Where are their um Where are the single tile comets, man? I did not touch that. I have not touched any of that, just FYI. So that's all base game still. 
And I mean, those could work if they were destroying wonders and stuff like that. But since they're not destroying wonders, that does not help Japan's march back. Does anyone else? So we talk about Japan. Is anyone else with it? No. <laughs> no, it's a three-person race right now. It's a three-person race. Hear it? I hear it. And that's going for Babylon. Um, that actually was the ex-Mongolia city. And all there went our Oshkosh. Man, everyone was working on that Oshkosh there for the longest time. So the first one actually blew up... Um, blew up a ex-Mongolia town, which is funny because Mongolia is getting hit. So uh, apparently nature doesn't really realize about the changing borders. They were like, ah, Mongolia put this city down. Let's kill it. Let's kill it. It'd be funny if every comet just hit one sieve. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's a way to actually program it. I mean, there is a way to program it. There's not a way for me to program it or like an easy way to like change the current like XML files to do that. Because I'm pretty sure it's just like a complete, I mean, it is just a completely random thing. All right. So now it's just hitting Korea as well. All right. We still got like a lot of turns left. So I'm just going to like put a pause here and we're just going to kind of let this tick because I really don't see a lot happening. I'll keep a close eye though and we'll pop back every time something major happens. Um, okay, well, a four-tile city from Kamar just got hit. Literally, it's been, like, one turn. Um, but, yeah, a four-tile comet just destroyed one of their cities, which they still have a 200-point lead. So, yeah, we still got a ways to go on that, but um, that is very interesting. So, all right, we'll keep an eye. We'll be back again. Okay, so this has been not really that interesting, but there's a couple major things. So any hope of Japan actually catching up has been thoroughly put down by the comets. They have essentially wiped out three uh, Japanese cities where Kamar just basically had a couple comets hit their tiles, but didn't really do anything. So the chances of Japan actually catching up are basically nil at this point, although we are about to get to another era, which is partly why we unpaused the game. The bigger thing is the fact uh, that was a city state. Yeah, that was a city state. But the bigger question is Babylon actually has now lost a couple cities to the comments, which has now officially put Taverman in first place. That's a big deal because remember, first place automatically gets the knockout rounds. Second place still has to kind of earn their way in because they got the second chance, second chance rounds. So, you know, this is kind of a big deal. That being said, you know, it definitely is probably, I don't say it's favoring Babylon, but like Khmer's kind of overdue to actually get hit. I think they're the only ones that, I mean, I guess they did lose one city, but really they have not like seen too much punishment right now. So, all right, one tile comet here. Let's see who this one hit. That one hit Korea, it looks like. Um, Dark Ages from Japan, Babylon. Okay. Never mind. So it looks like Teoverman is going to go ahead and move into first place. And I think he's going to end up holding into first place. Yeah, that is very interesting. Now he's almost 100 points up with that Dark Age there. Woof. He also is closest to, you know, shooting off all the rockets, which is so crazy to me. Hammurabi, what happened to your science, dude? Yeah, I have no idea what happened to your science. Um, okay, so... Congratulations, Tay Averman. He's going to pull out a win on this one. So I think what we're going to end up doing is I'm just going to let this run in the background and I will pop in as soon as we get to the end of the game, just so you guys can see the end game screen, just so you can trust. Um, well, since you don't trust me, just so you guys can, you know, see exactly who wins, which, yeah, I don't think there'll be a, uh, I don't imagine there can even be a sneak victory out of this. I suppose maybe the science, um, but diplomacy is too far away. Religion was too far away. So, yeah. All right. Well, congratulations then to Babylon and to uh, Teoverman for moving on. It looks like Kamar is actually going to be the one, though, in the second chance rounds. But we shall see. We shall see. Um, but anyway, so hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, share your support. We'll be back here in just a couple of seconds when the game actually ends so you guys can see who is actually the winner. So, till then. Okay. I know it's not the end of the game, but what? <laughs> so, we had the comet hit right here, which apparently destroyed because this was the lake that had the um, Hue in it, right? There wasn't a lake up here that had it. So how, what the heck actually happened here? So this is the weirdest thing now because now he has the Panama Canal to literally nowhere. Oh, you know what it looks like happened? When this city died, he ended up losing the Hue, which then also apparently this one tile here was also a part of it. Oh, that's what ended up happening. I was really confused by this whole thing because I was like, wait, what the heck happened to the Panama Canal? Now it goes nowhere. And I actually thought that this comet had uh, something to do with it. Oh, dude, he got hit again yeah like he's getting completely punished now oh boy that's painful so all right well anyways once again we're gonna be back here when the game ends so one sec 
All right, I gotta be honest. I don't know if I've ever seen comets quite like uh, like this before in a game. Basically, the comets have just been super nice to Kamar and just punishing everyone else. I mean, okay, he's gotten hit one, two, three, four, five, but really for the most part, no major damage other than he lost one city. Like, I don't even know if it took out any wonders besides that one city. On the other hand, Babylon dude is just like a shell of what they once were. Like, I think they've lost like three or four cities now since like the last time we popped in. Like. Look, Japan's almost caught up to Hammurabi. I mean, not really, but like, <laughs> what the hell? Hammurabi was at like 1,600 points before the comets. Like, this has been like a freaking gigantic middle finger by nature here against Babylon. Really freaking crazy, dude. Absolutely. I just have never seen the comets quite so punishing. Just like, and literally everyone except Kamar. Kamar's just like, yeah, what? What? Literally everyone else. Literally everyone else. Also, like, that's kind of hilarious. Finally gets a city right there finally gets a city over there which we were calling for for the longest time and then it just gets murdered it's kind of cool though with like the walls there yeah that actually looks pretty freaking baller um but yeah he's just gonna totally cruise to victory so uh we only got a couple turns left here i mean japan like lost like <laughs> what the heck everyone else at least everyone else that he was competing with the funny thing and we never really talked about it uric was actually down to no hp uh he had artillery uh a kamar did and he was just like shooting it down to zero uh HP, but he had no melee units to actually conquer it, so he could have actually had Uruk here in all this as well, so absolutely psychotic game man um gotta say it was it was an entertaining one there at least until this episode where like two just kind of ran away with it <laughs> i kind of wish i mean ah, the only thing that could have been different is had mongolia maybe stayed a little bit like stronger and i mean honestly samarius is just getting punished too by kamar just really like screwed it up like i mean that was really the big two things was uh kamar being able to just absolutely destroy samaria and babylon being able to destroy mongolia that just basically set back those two sieves which then uh, allowed the competitor sieves just to kind of ball out of control. And then the comments came in and just made sure that Kamar made it through. So there you go. The game definitely favors Kamar. You know, not at all shocked because the game wants to give me a middle finger because it's a video game. And what else happens? Like, this is always what happens. All right. So, yep, he got a score victory. No shock there. And then we'll pop here and look at player score. And like, look at that. <laughs> what the freaking hell? Like, what the heck? Look at everyone. Like, Samaria is about the only one that actually gained points from when the comets started falling. Actually, no. Uh, maybe? I think he gained a little points from when they started falling. Um... He probably, who is this? Uh, Kublai Khan also probably gained a little bit more points as well. But everyone else ended up losing massive amounts of points, except for Kamar, who literally wasn't even affected. There was a little drop there, but other than that, it was like, what? There were comments? What? The apocalypse mode? What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So then tomorrow we're going to be back with group stage five for the second chance rounds. We have China. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Pachacuti. We have Arabia. We have Chandragupta. We have Mali. We have France and we have Scotland. Okay. This is not a, not a bad group. Chandragupta, I think, with the elephants has got to be a favorite. France has been pretty good, though, we've seen. Uh, Pachacuti has not been bad. Scotland, I think, made the knockout rounds last time. And actually, we thought that they actually had made the knockout out rounds this time but they got ninja out by uh rome and then china you know i love china china is one of my favorite civs too just with the wonder building but hey i just usually well if we see a china base we've seen this before where china is like a uh, wonder their ai is wonder obsessed if that happens china can just be absolutely psychotic but it's it's a bit of a long shot because i don't know how many different agendas the ai can have but you know if that can happen maybe maybe but for now like i said hope you enjoyed the episode see you guys tomorrow Bye, everyone.